Did you know that there are more than 30 symptoms that can be brought on by menopause or perimenopause, the years leading up to menopause? Yet most women don't know about all those symptoms and that they can show up as early as their 30s. So today I'm gonna tell you about 32 possible symptoms of perimenopause and menopause, and I'm gonna give you five possible solutions that can really help. In fact, one of these solutions could be the game changer that you or someone you know has been looking for. Every woman needs to know about this because symptoms hit the average female in her early 40s, and she often has no idea what's going on. Okay, so most people know about hot flashes, but they might not know about tingling extremities, for example, or anxiety, or craft. What's craft? Can't remember a f***ing thing! All joking aside, perimenopause and menopause are a natural part of life, but the symptoms can be confusing and difficult for millions of women everywhere. So let's talk about it and spread the word so women don't have to suffer in silence anymore. Well, hey there, I'm Rena Hedeman, and if this is the second or third time that you've seen me and you haven't subscribed yet, that's the universe telling you that you need to subscribe. <laughs> Okay, let's dive in. As you probably know, menopause is when a female's reproductive years are over, and it's official when she's had no period for 12 consecutive months. But even though the average age of menopause is 51 or 52, a woman can experience many life-altering symptoms due to perimenopause years before then. While their menstrual cycle is still very regular, and menopause seems really far in the future. That's what happened to me. I was 45 with a very regular, reliable cycle. My my mom told me she hit menopause at 52, so I wasn't expecting hot flashes or anything for a few more years. That summer, I started having massive mood swings and two things I had never experienced before in my life, anxiety and depression. The anxiety especially was really bad, kind of paralyzing, but I had no idea what was going on, so I didn't tell anyone. I just hoped it would go away. I also started feeling angry and pissed off a lot, but I didn't connect any of this to hormone fluctuations or decline. Mostly because I still got my period every month, like clockwork. And I had never had PMS symptoms in all the years of my cycle, so it didn't occur to me that it could be linked to shifting hormones. And no one had ever told me about this thing called perimenopause. And when I finally talked to my doctor about it, he didn't mention it as a possible cause either. He just offered me an antidepressant. More on that later. Most women enter perimenopause in their mid-40s. Whether they know what's going on might be a different story, and it lasts on average three to five years, but it can go on for 10 or 15. Personally, I've been in perimenopause now for almost 13 years, and I'm 58, so I'm proof that this phase can be very long for some people. I think the reason it can be confusing is because in most cases, you're still getting your period, although it might be sporadic, and you could possibly get pregnant, but your body is slowly transitioning from your fertile years to the end of your ability to have children. The problem is, during perimenopause, your reproductive hormones are declining and they can be very erratic. They go up and down like crazy, often not at all in sync with each other. So you can have these wild, unpredictable hormone fluctuations, and this can go on for years. I'm living proof. You might have very few symptoms, but if you don't know about all the possibilities, it can be really worrisome, or you can sort of think you're going crazy like I did. So let's Let's go over all the possible symptoms of perimenopause. Again, you might not have many or even any of these, but everyone should be aware of what might show up. There are more than you might think. For millions of women, it's a whole lot more than just hot flashes or a skipped period or two. I asked my friend and Yale classmate, Dr. Eileen West, who specializes in women's health. A lot of women are well acquainted with the classic symptoms of menopause, like hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia. But what people don't always know is that how many symptoms are actually hormone related. If you're a woman in her 40s who's experiencing joint pain or frozen shoulder or palpitations or dizziness or dry skin, these can all be related to the hormone changes that your body is going through. Frozen shoulder? Joint pain? Who knew? And there are so many more. Keep watching, you'll see. I've had a lot of the typical menopause symptoms like hot flashes, a lot of them and sometimes just washing my hands in warm water is enough to trigger one. But I've also had a lot of symptoms that are not typical, or at least that I never really knew about, like heart rhythm variations and joint pain. And it was kind of scary to have those things happen and wonder if I had a serious condition. But I was assured by my doctor that the only condition I have is menopause. <laughs> Fluctuating levels of estrogen and progesterone can also contribute to weight gain and disrupt sleep patterns and change the way the brain functions, which can mean a decline in mental clarity and focus. 
So why didn't I know that perimenopause was like constantly being pregnant? Fat and forgetful. Yippee. I look at food and I gain weight and I don't remember shit. I will literally be in the middle of a sentence and can't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> yup, me too. Brain fog is real. And I can't multitask anymore. I can barely even monotask without losing focus sometimes. Is monotask even a word? Oh, and one thing that's really annoying is stress incontinence. Sometimes when I laugh or cough or sneeze, I pee a little. It's the woat. Has that ever happened to you? Let me know in the comments. And here are some more symptoms you might have during perimenopause. Dry skin, itchy skin, tender boobs, decreased libido, vaginal dryness, painful sex, oh fun fun, increased belly fat, irregular heartbeat, irregular periods, really heavy periods that come fast and furiously. OMG, that can really ruin your day. I've had some serious, uh, accidents, shall we say, in airports, restaurants, once during a college tour with my daughter and there was only one tiny little bathroom for all the people on the tour with us. Have you ever experienced that? Oi! Okay, so what are more possible symptoms? Let's see. Anxiety, depression, moodiness, and irritability, as I said before. And of course, hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia, achy joints, oh, and weaker brittle bones, tingling extremities, muscle tension and aches, bloating, thinning hair, brittle nails, weight gain, dizzy spells, fatigue, panic attacks, nausea, headaches, digestive changes, burning mouth, increase in allergies. Oh, no wonder I often get hives all of a sudden out of the blue. These huge welts that itch like crazy and spread all over my body. It's because during perimenopause or menopause, females can have spikes in histamine, which is the chemical that causes allergic reactions. Who knew? I asked both my primary care physician and my dermatologist about my constantly itching skin and my hives breakouts. Both of them mentioned several possible causes, but neither mentioned my changing hormones. I really like my doctors and I don't mean to throw them under the bus, but what? We definitely need a lot more awareness and conversation about women's changing hormones and all the possible repercussions. Okay, so the big question is how to get some relief from these symptoms. Well, according to doctors who specialize in women's health, there are some good options out there. If you are suffering from significant perimenopausal and menopause symptoms, there are lots of steps that you can take to get started on management. First and foremost, take a look at the diet. Clean up the refined sugar. Try to stay focused on a mostly plant-based diet. Avoid processed foods. Second, get regular exercise. The exercise really helps with um, adjusting and regulating mood, helps you sleep better, and helps to avoid some of the weight gain. Third, you can try supplements and they may be helpful for mild symptoms, but studies just don't bear out that supplements do all that much for moderate or severe symptoms. For those, you may have to consider talking to your doctor about medication management. There are non-hormonal management strategies and hormonal management strategy. And I would just like to say that in terms of hormones, we really have come a long way since the Women's Health Initiative study 20 years ago, which really said lots of negative things about estrogen replacement. Estrogen can be very beneficial and very safe with new formulations and really make a huge difference. It is the number one way to, most effective way to treat severe hot flashes and also works on virtually everybody for vaginal dryness. So talk to your doctor. 13 years ago when perimenopause started for me, unfortunately, I didn't know that my old college classmates specialized in women's health and my primary care doctor didn't and my gynecologist wasn't much help either. So I researched and tried a lot of things, including psychotherapy, massage therapy, hormone replacement therapy in the form of compounded bioidentical hormones because I thought they were natural and safer than traditional HRT. And I also tried antidepressants, twice. I was already exercising and lifting weights regularly and eating a healthy diet high in fruits and vegetables and low in refined sugar and flour. So I was doing many of the right things to minimize some of the symptoms of perimenopause. Uh, don't get me wrong. I was still getting up at least once every night to change my PJs, which were soaked through. Diet and exercise definitely help, but they don't make your symptoms just disappear. 
I still felt really out of sorts by the anxiety, depression, the mood swings, including feeling angry and pissed off a lot. I tried meditating every day and that definitely helped, but I still wasn't my normal self and I really wanted my old self back. So long story short, I finally tried an antidepressant, but unfortunately that didn't help, so I just stopped taking it. That's when I tried compounded bioidentical hormones. They seem to help a little, but to be honest, I'm not sure if that was real or the placebo effect. It was kind of hard to tell. Then a few years later, a friend of mine who's a doctor told me about a different antidepression and anxiety medication that had really helped her, and she suggested I ask my doctor about it for me. So I did, and he prescribed me the lowest dose possible, and oh my gosh, after a few weeks, I felt like my old self. My anxiety and depression disappeared, and that particular medication also has the wonderful side effect of decreasing night sweats and hot flashes, which was fabulous. Now, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of Big Pharma, and I resisted the idea of medication for a long time, but holy moly, it honestly saved me. I got my old self back. It was just a question of finding the right solution for me. Is it for everyone? No. My advice to anyone in perimenopause or menopause is to first find a doctor who's trained in menopause management. That encompasses perimenopause too. Or find out if your gynecologist has been certified by the North American Menopause Menopause Society. They promote health and quality of life for all women during midlife and beyond, and they exist outside of North America as well. I'll put the link in the comments so you can find a NAMS certified practitioner in your area. I'm not affiliated with them, I just want to spare women some of the pain and confusion that I and many others have been through. Then once you find someone, talk to him or her about what's bothering you and find out what options might be best for you. Everyone's hormone situation is different. It all starts with awareness, and awareness is critical for physical and mental health. Oh, and the good news about all those symptoms we just talked about? Apparently they can eventually get better and go away altogether. Yes, there's a fabulous end, and I thought it would go on forever. I'm 64 now, and for me, it's all in the rearview mirror. In addition to being really difficult sometimes, the decrease in our female hormones can and does lead to some serious health complications later in life, like heart problems, stroke, and dementia. But there are things we can do now to stave that off. But that's a whole nother video. So we've talked about possible symptoms of perimenopause and menopause and a few potential solutions, but what about those other midlife? Life issues. You're going to want to watch this video next because knowing this is an absolute game changer.